<laughs> it's yeah. time for 2C3 Pod DTCR Does the Cinema. Absolutely. After a week off watching a terrible Netflix film, yes. we finally got back to the theatre, but to the terrible theatre and didn't go to our regular local, which was yes, incredibly no. disappointing. Yes. And I was going to take your advice, but unfortunately I ended up at the other place due oh, to scheduling. And you, sp- you spent way too much money oh, on it. Fucking way too much money. Yeah, man. I'm just hey, lucky it was my birthday sound- and I didn't have to pay. Yeah, the sound- Thanks, mum. The sound was fine and the chairs are good, but fuck me, you don't need that oh, shit. Oh my lord. Okay, okay. We're just going to name things. Yeah, Hoyts, man. Like, lower your price, man. Like, come on. Okay, Hoyts, we totally get it. Like Dylan said, the sound is fine. The picture quality is fine. The chairs are great. But we go to sit down and watch a movie. I don't want to have to pay a combined $20 for this much popcorn and a small drink. Yeah, plus your ticket on top of that, that, which is like $16. $16 for a movie ticket. Yeah. What what are we paying for your premium one? The Lux or whatever it is, you know? know? Yeah. Anyway, I'm Event sorry, Cinemas Glendale, we yes. would have been there, and you you advertised it on your website, but they didn't show it at Glendale. They, they it had at- a poster for it at Glendale. Did they? They had a poster. <laughs> I'm sure, I swear to God, I posted it on our page when I took ah, all the pictures yeah. of the posters at Glendale. So, anyway, Event Cinemas Glendale, we apologize for cheating on you, but my Lord, we, we had, had to no because choice. this was the film this week. Yeah. But we will be back next week, 100%. We got to see uh, the latest horror film for this month or for January horror action sci-fi thing that has to kind of fill this gap within this year before things may come out Mm -hmm. later on Um, I feel like I get to say that I had the privilege of watching a movie called Underwater yes uh, directed by William Ubank written by Brian Duffield and Adam Kozad good research man is that right? I don't know, but you're struggling. Yeah, well, I don't know how to pronounce their names. Anyway, Brian Duffield and Adam Kozad. Yep. Yeah, starring, starring Case, Case Stu, Stu, Vincent Cassell, Jessica Henwick, John Gallagher Jr., Mamodou Athey, and TJ Miller. Mm-hmm. Um, distributed by 20th Century Fox. And what? they had the... Dun-dun. They had it, man. Yeah, but so it geared me up for though. a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah but still, it yeah, was there. It gears you up for a it film. It was there. Yeah, uh, the budget fifty million dollars, but the yep. box office as of this review being the 29th Well, it's only of, been out for three days. Yeah, hmm. uh, thirty three point six million dollars mm-hmm. on its opening weekend. Nothing wrong with that. But they are saying that it is considerably tanking. Uh, <sighs> go, it's going up against nineteen seventeen still, and uh, a few other good films. Yes. Listen, I, I overall okay underwater. Wait, synopsis. Okay, let's go through yeah. the synopsis. That I read the, you wrote a synopsis, so okay. yeah, get into it, man. So, claustrophobic alien style horror with mm-hmm. surprising non stop action. A deep sea mining crew whose company mined too deep into the ocean must make their way through the facility, which is falling apart around them. Mm-hmm. But that's not the only thing that's. Wait, that's not the only danger. They must survive against creatures never seen before while wearing cool as fuck space-like diving suits which look like the combination of Dead Space and Gears of War. Mm-hmm. For a film as non-stop as this, there's very little story, but it tells enough to make us care for the characters and to understand why the events are taking place. Yes. That's what I've read. That's, that's a pretty damn good description of the entire situation that's yeah. going on. The reason I say that is because mm. the movie starts with literally Case Jew and she's brushing her teeth. Yep. All of a sudden, bang, and then off we go. Exactly. It's literally probably a minute and a half, two minutes of her brushing her teeth. She goes to put her shoes on and the second she touches like the shoe, has to run. Like, yeah, and it doesn't stop it, until the fucking end It really end of doesn't the film. stop. There are a few, of course, like, you know, isolated in a room type of things yep. and things like that where you get a chance to talk and kind of digest and learn a bit more about the characters. Yeah. But it still doesn't stop. Yeah. There's always that overwhelming filming of something's there. Yeah. Something's there. And that's why I say there. the combination mm. of Dead Space and Gears of War because the, the, the underwater, like, diving suits mm. they have are very big and clunky Ooh, and yeah. sort of futuristic, but the yes. monsters that they're fighting against, Ooh. it's not, not a spoiler, there's fucking creatures down yeah. there. Yeah. They're always kind of in your peripheral. You can see their glowing exactly, eyes. Exactly, yeah. I think that played really well. And I think this movie would have benefited from, I mean, all right, before I say that, I will say this film mm. is definitely highly influenced by Alien. 100%. Alien 1. 100%. And especially with the scene with where they bring a specimen into that yes, little room. That happens that was in very, the movie Life mm. as well, which is also yep. very, very heavily influenced by Alien. And I like these movies. I like that they're influenced. No, I was going to say, but it's it's not only influenced by, but also, yes, Alien was the original, but how, how you can't really take that to another direction without it being compared 
So from yeah. now on, so these I'm types cool of films, it. it's like alien inspired. It may not even be alien inspired, but there's a lot of similarities yeah. to the original that always and, will be. And I don't think there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. I like alien and I like movies that may mm-hmm. be similar or yeah. at least trying to do something similar. Mm-hmm. But what I was going to say is that I think this movie would have benefited from maybe stretching it out and giving us a bit more time okay. to sort of digest a bit more. Yeah. Like, but, and the, the bad side of that where people would go, well, it's too much like Alien. It, it, it slows down in parts and yeah, fucking whatever. So yeah. I was actually pleasantly surprised at the idea that it just was nonstop. Yeah. And it was just action I after didn't action. Expect that. Yeah, that, and it that, was uh, still yeah. horror. It's still I was going scary. in there expecting that, like you said, you know, mm. like as in it for it to progress a story a little bit, for you to learn about the characters, that kind of thing. But I mean, the fact that it's straight into it—that's and probably, it still does. That. That's it probably still does one of, convey the message. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, 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 exactly. And there is still time to understand the characters and get to know them a little bit. But there's two things to me that held this film back, and that's one of them in the fact that uh, there's moments that are supposed to appear like very emotional and have you, you know, feeling, you know, feelings towards these characters. Yeah, yeah. But you don't really get there. You don't get you the know? chance to really exactly. Care all that you much. you learn about things about Case Stew and her fiance and things of that nature, and you learn yeah. about the the um, couple that is involved. You yes, know, and the captain's daughter who's exactly. fourteen and, still, and the yeah. captain's captain's daughter and things of that nature. But they kind of just get told to you, and then you're supposed to ten minutes later when that gets brought up again, react to it. Yeah. So there isn't a chance to get emotionally invested in those moments that's you know? right so, so for me it didn't have any emotional investment on me but it was still fine as is yeah the other detriment to me is and it's one that they cannot avoid yeah. was the lighting yes oh, yeah no i definitely understand where you're getting with that it, it was fantastic for what they were trying to do and like yep. you said seeing it in the peripherals and just it's always in shot but never in shot kind of thing yeah and that's all well and good but the amount of times where you were almost trying to you, you're trying too hard to focus that you lose the moment yeah. Because because obviously they're seven miles under the water, so it's pit. Oh, my apologies, it's pitch black under there. Yeah, you do have certain lighting from the helmets and things like that, and when they are interior, there are like security lights and stuff. But for me, it was a bit too dull okay. to be able to fully. I, def- I definitely ingest got, what we were seeing. I definitely you know? got that vibe from yeah. when they were outside the facility and they're walking oh, on the ocean floor. Yeah, and I think like I appreciate that the, the way they went for it because mm-hmm. they are mm-hmm. underwater. They, they can only see as far as their light takes them, but there's yeah. also this dirt and debris floating around them because mm-hmm. they're in the ocean. Of course, I think maybe whether I mean I would assume that that's animated. Mm. Or whether they're just underwater and they filled it with dirt and they're swirling it around. I have no idea how they filmed it. But yeah. if it was animated and they had the choice they of changing have, that, I feel yeah. they should have just cleared it up that little bit more. Yeah. But I, I you understand know, going I get for, where they were going from. They were yeah. going for realism where they could. Exactly. And I understand the realism. But at the same time, we can't relate. No. We, yeah. I, I, I think probably 0.001% of the population watching this film will have any kind of relation to deep sea diving that low and know, <laughs> and know what to see, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So if they had have cleared it up, I wouldn't have been like, mm, the water looked too clear for seven miles. I don't fucking know. Yeah, that's you know, so thing yeah, well. exactly. So, so, uh, so what we're saying essentially is that some of the detriments are also its benefits. Yeah, you know, no, so that's I don't exactly think it's right. a perfect film, but it works for what it was going for. That's why it's been feeling weird. My headphones broken. Yeah, <laughs> chuck it here. No, 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 you're right. It's no, very it's, sweaty. It's definitely not going on the way. No, 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 no. Oh, you no, got no. it? Yeah. yeah, no, I know where I'm going. I just couldn't get it out. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think, listen, I, I was skeptical that this film cast TJ Miller. And I think he's, be, he's been finding things that I've, li- that I've yeah. watched him in. He's good in Deadpool where he tones it down yeah. a bit. Yeah. I first saw TJ Miller in a movie called She's Out of My League. Oh, um, my Lord. Alongside oh. Jay Baruchel. And yeah. I thought he had great comedic timing yep. in yep. that. Yep. Him cast in this film, I was like, oh, here we go. Here's the, the, the yeah. annoying comic relief. Mm. And there was a smidge of that. A smidge? Well, actually, no. It's probably okay. a little bit more than a smidge. I but- was going to write a note for this film okay. that was um, like talking about that I did enjoy the film, blah, blah, blah. And unfortunately, seeing the non-progression of TJ Miller as an actor. Oh yeah, I didn't get any progression from this man because yeah, that's right. Almost he, he every plays line, your he, typical. Almost yeah, it's a more serious situation than we've seen him before. But at the same time, almost every line was a one-liner or yep. setting something up or yeah. it wasn't serious. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, mean, I was expecting yeah. the TJ Millerisms to be heavy in this movie and they were, but not as much as I expected them to be. And I, yeah. very surprisingly to me, I did chuckle at some moments. No, no, no. Yeah, so no. I think it worked okay and I think he had one of the best deaths 
I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going to try and word it without saying that, yes, he dies. But he, of course he dies. He's the comic relief. Yeah. I mean, he, he is what With the way expect. this box office going, and you're not going to watch it, but I hope you do. Yeah, mm. no, exactly. But um, yeah, definitely the best death. Yeah. Also, I don't know, man. I mean, the very first one, as soon as they hop in the, uh, the water and get the pressure. Oh, yeah. Black yeah. guy, the black guy dies first. Yeah, Taylor, again, again, I wasn't going to spoil it. Yeah, but, but come on, like Taylor leaned over to me. She's, yeah. like I didn't, I didn't think of it at first. And no, Taylor, I did Taylor straight leaned, up. Taylor leaned over to me. She's like, the black guy just died, and I was yeah. like, he's the only one to die so far. Like Hollywood, like yeah. there must, there must be a contract in the law of filmmaking. Yeah, that the that the, 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 the token black They're character They're probably still basing must it off, first. off like a filmmaking contract made in the thirties. Like yeah. yeah, yeah, no, but absolutely, like. Yes, it is a spoiler, but I mean, there's a lot more to go after this. Yes, but yeah, the absolutely. fact the fact that the first time they're in real danger yeah. and the black dead dude's dead in like 30 seconds and you're like, really? Yeah. Really? I would have liked to have seen that character carry it on a little bit more. No, that was pretty cool. Yeah, um, he was he was probably one of the ones that I was going to connect with. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. he mm. was kind of one of the first to be introduced besides Case Chew. That Well, she he was there like a minute after she yeah. first appeared on screen and was there the whole time yeah. until that. One mm. thing that really surprised me, though, that I will say, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but we've been talking a lot over the past few episodes mm. about the introduction of HP Lovecraft-style movies, yes. and that we're going to be getting a Cthulhu-style movie. With that new trilogy? Mm. This movie was almost there, wasn't it, man? Man, there was, there was portions towards that end where I'm like, maybe yeah. Nick Cage is, is the second <laughs> in the trilogy. Like, yeah. as in, I started getting a bit excited at that ending, man. Yeah. I gotta say. But I will say, don't spoil anything, yeah. but your thoughts on the actual ending. I liked it. Yeah? Yeah, because it shows what ex- exactly what would happen if that was a real situation. Yeah. In terms okay. of like, oh, how do I say it without spoiling it? Yeah, yeah. Um, the incidents that occurred were mm. covered up entirely. Okay, yeah. And just nobody really knows what happened. Did you catch the very obvious subtle sequel bait right in the last frame? No, I did not. Okay. We'll have to talk about that off air. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. But either way, man, pretzel rating or how are you viewing it? So Taylor asked me... Oh, sorry. Good, great, bad, yeah, no, terrible. Yep, what it- so I've seen three, mu- three movies this year mm-hmm. in the cinemas and this is my first one that I'm going to say that it wasn't great. It was good. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But Taylor asked me right at the cinema. So what'd you rate it? I said seven. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going back on that. You yeah. just took my exact rating. Did I? I was going to okay. give it seven out of 10 pretzels because yeah. yes, it was good. It was serviceable, but yeah. I'm not rushing out to see this again. Yeah. You know, and I understand the point behind it. I will say my biggest takeaway besides the final scene and the, you know, yeah. not in a wink to the HP um, is Case Stew did very well. Yeah, she's phenomenal. Very yeah. well as a main actress by yeah. herself in a film. That she carried. Yeah. She and carried you know the suit. She, she would have been, wa- yeah, she hmm. been walking around in that big, heavy-ass fucking suit. And she's, she's only a tiny, tiny person. Tiny, poor girl. Yeah. yeah. So she would have been struggling, and she fucking gave it her all. I think she was great. She spent a lot of time in this film wearing nothing but her underwear, but I think that was also Alien-inspired. Do you remember of the course. final scenes of Alien where Sigourney Weaver, like Ellen Ripley's running around in her undies because she has to get in the suit? Yes. Yeah. But also, like, as in, she's mostly in the suit, let's be honest, but yeah, there yeah, are chunks right. where she is just in her underwear because that's all that's under the suit, you know? Yeah. That's so right. that was a nice little bit of realism to it. And yeah. Yeah. But I, I hope this film doesn't get a sequel because I know that the sequel won't be, if it is, there's no point. it'll triple the budget and it'll be a big dumb no, well, thing. No, not only that, it would be involving the stupidest people ever after what happened in the first situation with that company. Yeah, like, that's right. Yeah, anybody so I, who I works hope, with that company after this, yeah. you were an idiot. I would hope this film sort of stays yeah, on its long term. stays as it is. Thing. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Go mm-hmm. out and see Underwater if yeah. it's still out and it's something that you're interested in. And if it's you at like. an appropriately priced theatre. Yes, please <laughs> don't fucking spend way too much on that. Because yeah. even if the movie is amazing, don't go spending more than $20 on it. No. Don't go spending more than $12 on a if cinema ticket. If you're sure. in the Newcastle region where we are, the number one pop culture podcast, let's yeah, be honest. absolutely. Um, You've got to hit up event cinemas. Yeah. I mean, the prices are all around at the events are pretty on the level. Yep. Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're her home. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's yeah. been our show. Yes. Mitchell. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Yes. Thank you, everybody, much mm. for listening. Thank um, you, everybody, much. That's a t-shirt. Did I say that again? Yep. Every week. Thank you, everybody, much. For- 
Yeah, See? I do say that. Every I I know. I'm not just breaking it up. Thank you, everybody, very much there. for listening. We're Two's Company Three is a podcast. Mm-hmm. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Two C Three Pod. That's right. And wherever you're listening to or watching us, make sure it's your preferred platform and you subscribe. We are available on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and of course YouTube. YouTube. Big summer, summer blowout. blowout. Now you can support the show, of course, by heading over to tpublic.com. You can get yourself a t-shirt, a mug, a sticker, or a fridge magnet. And you can also head mm. over to our Patreon now. You mm. can certainly support us there as well. But if you'd also like to support us additionally, that's right. You can make a one-time donation to PayPal, Two's Company Three's Podcast at gmail.com. Any dollar, any cent amount would yep. be greatly appreciated and just a nice little thumbs up to us to let us know that we're doing a decent job. So, yeah, absolutely. All feedback, two company three podcast at gmail.com. Absolutely. Any business inquiries as well. Absolutely. Now, we have two podcasts every week, every Wednesday and every Friday. Wednesdays are always the news and reviews. Fridays, yes. of course, which we'll see you next week. No, on Friday, sorry. Yes. Is Trailer Park and Yas or Park. Yes. So, we've Ca- definitely got a cracker coming up this Friday. Oh, yes. Casual Friday is going to be a blast. But don't forget... We will be back to our regularly scheduled four videos on YouTube every week. In the second week of February, I think we're looking at because we're changing studios next week. Yes. One week to settle in and then we'll be back to our regular four videos on YouTube every week. So make sure you subscribe and ring that bell. You know, set yourself up for when we're back. All of that jazz. Yes. Thank you, everybody, much for tuning in. Why? Thank you, yeah, thank you everybody, <laughs> much for tuning in. God damn it. Thank yes. you, everybody, very much for tuning in. This is Two's Company, Three's a podcast. My name is Dylan, as always, with my co-host. Mitchell, and do not forget, we are Two's Company, but you are the, the podcast. podcast. Thanks for tuning into that video by Two's Company, Freezer a podcast. Don't be sad though, there's plenty more where that came from. Another cheeky video right there, maybe even hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Or, if you don't like our faces, check us out on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube.